And hi everyone, uh, we're back, uh, back live to talk about a new service launched this morning. And I'm super excited to have uh, Adi Krishnan to talk about uh, the Amazon Kinesis video stream that was launched today. So first of all, who are you? Who and why are you so excited about that product? So uh, I'm Adi. And I've been with AWS now for about five years. And this entire time, I've been working with streaming data. Oh. Life started five years ago, streaming uh, tiny discrete events. You know, click stream data, mobile app stream data, uh, log server data. And then, over time, we've now shifted to helping customers ingest audio, video, and all, the, all those kinds of data types. And my role, I'm very fortunate to be working with a small band of highly motivated, excited engineers to build, operate, and manage the service that we now have called Kinesis Video Streams. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, we 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 work backwards from you know, from customers. So, I'm sure we we had customers having problems with video streaming. Can you talk about those? And uh, you know, they probably inspired some of your work. Absolutely, absolutely. So, as we were going through our journey with uh, uh, with, with streaming data, customers said that. You know, it's, it's amazing that what we can do with discrete event data, but a lot of my real next generation of big data problems are going to come from this really rich source of insight, which is video. So we have sensors. Increasingly, a lot of these sensors are image sensors, mm -hmm. not right. audio sensors. That's right. and, and what customers wanted was the ability to simply securely connect, put this media data, and then be able to consume that data reliably so that then they could build a whole bunch of really interesting, meaningful applications. Right. And so that became our motivation. So how do we build a foundational system that helps customers do exactly that? And for customers, the goal really is, how do we build smart, machine learning driven algorithms that can process and act on this kind of video and audio data? So you're telling me the service uh, does all that for you. Uh, Ingestion of video, storage, processing, analytics. What else? Uh, uh, and, and it slices your bread for you too. No, <laughs> so the, the, the core of the service is to capture, yeah. store, and enable for processing those video streams. That's at its heart what it's supposed to do. What customers can do is get their own applications, machine learning driven, deep learning driven. Right. They can use some of Amazon's own AI services applications mm -hmm. to connect them all together to drive their use cases. Right. So we have lots of customers, and you know, a big, big, big problem with videos is there's a lot of different formats, lot of different supported file types. Yeah. So can yeah. you talk about what kind of formats we're supporting and things like this? That, that's a really interesting question, and, and kind of dives deep into kind of the foundations of what it means to deal with video data. So there are two kinds of two levels of formats. One format is really uh, the encoding format for the, the video data itself. This is so MP4 or H? Interestingly, a MP4 would be a container format. Okay. What you're referring to with H.264 is the actual encoding format. Yeah. So for, for example, for latest generation iPhones, it actually encodes data in H.265. And what is that really? That is a highly efficient way to do motion compensation on video data such that for the same quality you consume lesser storage and lesser bandwidth. Yep. And so that is the encoding format. You take that encoding format and then you place it in a container format. Right. And, and that, an MPEG-4 format is an example of that. Okay. Now interestingly enough, what does it mean in Kinesis Video? For Kinesis Video, the streaming data format is based, the container format, is based on this open source, uh, open source format called Matroska, or MKB. Yep. And the interesting thing about that is that it's highly flexible. And flexible in what ways? Kinesis Video is not just for audio and video. You can put in a number of other time-encoded data types, things like radars, things like LIDARs that, that show up in self-driving cars. Uh, thermal cameras, depth sensors, so a whole bunch of these, what we are calling time encoded data, and it so happens that they don't have a specific format. That's right. And so we had to find an, an effective way for customers to model those kinds of data types 
while not doing the heavy lifting of actually packaging that packaging that data to do reliable streaming into the cloud. So that's the story of how we got to the streaming container format that's based on Matroska or MKV as it's called. Okay, great. Uh, and one question I'm sure everyone is wondering, what are the challenges that you had to face with your team to build a service that does you know, so much? I mean, video is not something that is trivial to handle, right? You, you, you're spot on, you're spot on. And I think we focused, our challenges lay in three different areas. The first one was, we had to really understand the devices that were going to be the source of this audio and video. And this wasn't just about, well, let's build an SDK that runs on a device. Right. Yes, we have to do that. But the more interesting thing was, how do we build an SDK that can understand the media pipeline running on the device? So what do I mean by that? Wow. This is what I mean. You've got a camera sensor. That camera sensor feeds into an encoder. Yep. The output of that encoder is H.264, H.265 encoded data. And we had to build a lower level device SDK that developers can use to integrate at that frame or fragment level that is, uh, that is created by that encoder. So that's challenge number one. And how do we make it run on the iOS platform? How do we do that for Android? How do we do it such that you can take that device SDK install it on your MacBook, and use the inbuilt uh, uh, webcam to start streaming. Yeah. So that's challenge number one. Diversity of devices, this is what developers have to struggle with every single day. Absolutely. That's a problem that we have to go address, number Thanks. one. Number two, video, apart from scale and elasticity and all those gnarly problems, is even gnarlier. Jitter, cadency, the tolerance to, to misbehaving networks. These are all fundamentally novel, unique challenges that, that hit you the most when you deal with video. Mm -hmm. And so we had to go deal with that. And the third big set of challenges was, how do we create a system that for a developer doesn't force him to say, either you can work on live data or you can work on durably stored persistent data. And so how do we build a set of cogent APIs that are reliable and scalable for both real time as well as non-real-time use cases. So those were the three big challenges. And I have to say, we've just scratched the surface. Yeah. And it's going, to be, it's going to be a bit of a journey for us, yeah. but we'll get better. Uh, thanks very much for sharing those yeah, challenges. I think you know, there are a lot of developers online. Actually, if you're online and you want to ask some questions, please do so. Do, do how do we get started? How do people get started uh, with that service? What do they need to do and things like this? Can you yeah, so, so to get started, the first thing you will do when you get to the Kinesis Video Streams Management Console is that we will request you to create a stream. Thankfully, that's a couple of clicks. Mm -hmm. Life is simple, you, can, you now have a fully managed elastic stream. You can be doing a 360p video stream, scale that up to 4K, drop back down to 720p, this, the stream will just scale. And it scales from one device to uh, and thousands, from million thousands, device. hundreds of thousands of devices. Without software, doing anything. Without any wow. operator overhead. Okay, so that part, that part's fun and easy. We think we have addressed that to, to a, a large extent. The second thing we'll do is ask you to pick the device platform of choice, which is going to be the ultimate producer of data, right? And that's when you'll pick C++ or Java or Android or iOS and, and incorporate that into whatever fun producer application it is that you're building. So you get a specific SDK for the device? For, for, for those language, hardware okay. and software OS platforms. Yep. Exactly right. Once that's done, you, can, you are on your journey to reliably stream data into the AWS cloud. And that's when I think the fun, creative part really begins. That's right. right? What amazing application are you going to build next? Uh, what do I connect? What, what, do, what are you yeah. going to connect it to? Uh, so from the developer's perspective, they're essentially writing frames into that abstraction layer that you have on the device, which is the SDK, and then that transports the frames in sequence into the service and makes them available for analytics or deep learning. That's, that's how exactly the flow works. Right. Right. Okay. There's a put media, at the end of the day, a put media and right. a get media. Yep. Very and similar to a Kinesis uh, stream. Very, anyway, and uh, very similar text. to S3 even, yeah, where you kind of distill the, the essence of the service in, right. into those two APIs. Cool. Uh, can you talk a bit about the pricing model? Absolutely. Uh, so what we know about video is that it's spiky. You never know how many viewers are going to show up. That's right. You never know how many devices are going to be connected. And so we realize that we have to have a model that is fundamentally elastic. 
a provision nothing model where the, the, the customer, the developer, shouldn't have to say, well, I need these many streams and this is the capacity. So we've distilled the, the pricing model into three phase you go pricing dimensions. Pricing dimension number one, streaming data ingested into the service per gigabyte. Pricing dimension number two, depending on how many applications you have, what they're consuming, streaming data consumed. And then yep. the third dimension is storage. You are not required to store the media in your stream. You can simply set a property on a per stream basis to set your retention period from an hour to years. Wow. And you can change at any point in time. And so based on how much you end up storing in your streams, there is a storage related pricing dimension. And here's the thing, that pricing dimension is the exact same price point as S3's pricing dimension. And you can use S3 lifecycle policies to, to archive to all into of those uh, Glacier eventually. Exactly right. Awesome. Yeah. Right, uh, what do you see uh, the product uh, going, uh, where do you see the product going in the future? Oh I'm, boy. I'm sure you have lots of oh ideas. Oh boy, we have so many ideas yeah. and not enough hours in the day. Uh, and, and when I head back to Seattle, that's what the team is going to be pushing me on. <laughs> what is the next, next yeah, exactly. great addition to the service? And, and the obvious thing is we are going to learn from customers. I think what's going to happen is that the next, next few weeks and months, we are going to be just having this fun time understanding what amazing thing customers are going to build. But we see innovations on the device side. Mm -hmm. We see innovations on how do we make it even easier to hook up all these amazing AWS services that we've released just at Reinvent. That's a question that we got on the stream, actually. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Jack Zinger asks whether it's possible to integrate with a recognition for video via Kinesis Video Streams. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked that question. So, you can use recognition video, and we have a first class integration with Kinesis Video Streams. So you should be able to trigger your face detection, your motion detection capabilities within video recognition, consuming straight off of a Kinesis Video Streams. This is crazy, if you think about it 10 years ago, or even like five years ago, you know, if you would think about doing live ingestion of video with machine learning, AI, I mean, this, yeah, it's kind of pushing nuts. the limit a little it's bit. It's kind of nuts how, how, how fast. I think I saw it in the early Jason Bourne movies, but I'm not sure it was the reality at that time. <laughs> now it is. Yeah, <laughs> now it is. <laughs> now it's great. Uh, I mean, you're working with the service, you can build the service there. I'm sure you have some ideas. If you would be a customer, what would you build right today? So, if I were a customer, just given you know, who I am as an individual, I would build something that is related to helping people's overall health. Uh, more specifically, uh, I, I'm a big fan of, of sports and sporting events, and I think that by using live video and being able to apply not just on visible spectrum, but also things like skeletal tracking systems, which is an example of time encoded data that can be ingested okay. into video streams, to run the kinds of algorithms that can, that can help detect prevent injuries, right. to, to help say, we think that this player's gait or the way this tackle was conducted are fundamentally unsafe and that we should, in real time, provide coaching feedback to this wow. young player to oh, say, wow. you, this is how you might want to address your practice. Right. Right? To, so, so that's the sort of stuff I would personally build, right. but really sky is the limit from, wow, this is from, awesome. it's from great smart to home scenarios to, to public safety. Yeah. Uh, to industrial automation, yeah, I think the sky is the limit. See a lot of applications in security, uh, monitoring for safety and for yes. personal protection, that yes. kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Do we have any more questions from Twitch, or I still have one question to to ask before? Because we're uh, soon there's a question out of from time. Twitch about playback. So there's a customer asking whether it would be possible to build an app that did things like picture-in-picture picture dynamically using this service. So stream two videos and then aggregate them and create a PIP output feed. Is that something that could be built using this kind of service? Absolutely. And, and, and I say that because the core abstraction in this scenario, where the data is durably stored at some point in the past, is going to be this API yep. called Get Media for Fragment List. When you call that API on a per stream basis, you can say, go back to time T1, and between time T1 to T2, I want you to return to me those specific fragments. And the right. fragment is a self-contained group of pictures, yep. right? And once you pull that out, you can say that, do the same 
for stream two, yep. stream three. And yeah. build your composite and, and stream that back out exactly again. Right? Wow. Yeah. 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 Okay, great. Oh, that's great. Uh, my last question uh, is uh, where can customers learn more from that? We would highly recommend that you go to aws at amazon.com slash kinesis where the video stream service is prominently featured. Cool. All of our core technical documentation is placed right there. So if you're a developer who's itching to build, we would love for you to do so immediately. Uh, and we'll put the, the link on the Twitch, uh, Twitch chat as well. Uh, and I think on that note, uh, thank you very much for sharing all that information, uh, sharing that passion for, for, yeah. for the service with my, us. My pleasure, guys. Uh, thank great. you very much. Thanks thank for joining you. us. Appreciate thank it. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so we'll be right back after a short break with our next segment. Thanks for joining us on twitch.tv slash AWS.